Hi, I'm Leslie Sibilic, Senior Curator at the Senator John Hines History Center. And for today's History at Home video, I wanted to talk a little bit about libraries. You know, this is National Library Week, and April 21st is Thank Your Libraries Day. It's also Thank You For Libraries Day and Thank Your Librarian Day. So regardless of which set of words you choose to use, it's a day that we should really think a moment about the contributions made by our libraries. And that certainly includes us at the History Center. Our own Detry Library and Archives is a hugely valuable part of the organization and in fact is how the History Center got started. So a shout out to our own library and archives and our librarians and archivists on staff. But the history of libraries in Pittsburgh started as early as 1788. Um, that was the first time that someone began talking about how to found a library here. And by the early 1800s, multiple examples of what people called a library had gotten started. They weren't quite the public type of organization you think of today. They were really private collections. People would pool their resources and a number of men would in effect create a private club. And for anywhere from a dollar to five dollars, you could belong to this organization and borrow books. Now, five dollars doesn't sound like a lot of money, but for example, in 1813, that was the equivalent of eighty dollars. And considering that the average agricultural worker made about fifty cents, that's actually a lot of money for the time period. But one of the most famous names connected with libraries in Pittsburgh got his start through one of these private libraries, but a little bit later. In 1850, Colonel James Anderson opened his own private library on the north side, or in what we now consider the north side, in Allegheny. And after the Civil War, a young boy of Scottish descent um, partook of this collection. And I'll bet if you think for a moment, you can figure out what his name was. It was Andrew Carnegie. And after he made his fortune in the steel industry, Carnegie, of course, became very famous for giving away most of his money in the creation of public libraries all across the country. Now, while many people today celebrate Carnegie for this legacy, I have to say that not everybody felt that way. And in the 1900s, there were people who critiqued Carnegie saying, oh, the workers aren't going to use that library. Instead, you should have used that money to better their own living conditions. And so he wasn't necessarily totally celebrated in his day, although now we really appreciate that legacy. But there's another famous name connected with Pittsburgh libraries who did appreciate that legacy, and that was August Wilson. Playwright August Wilson was very well known for basically quitting school at the age of 15. He, he got angry at a teacher who accused him, incorrectly, of plagiarizing a paper he had written on Napoleon, and so he left school, but he essentially educated himself through the resources of the Carnegie Library. He remembered that he got his first library card at the Hill District branch of the library in 1950. And August Wilson, many years later, in about 1999, in a talk he gave that was printed in the local paper, recalled that he appreciated Carnegie's legacy. He said, you know, I can say nothing bad about a man who made it possible to sit in his library and read basically the labor historian's critique of his own work. So Wilson had this wonderful reminder of the value of libraries, the value of accessing all the information. It's not censored, it's not controlled for you. You can access it yourself. So between Andrew Carnegie and August Wilson, there are wonderful kind of combination to use to think about the value of our local libraries. So go to the websites of your local libraries, even if you can't get in in public right now, and appreciate them for a moment. Again, celebrate National Library Week. 